Hey there YouTube, it's Leo Alderpold. Uh, it's a Sunday and I'm, uh, I'm up on Dartmoor again. Try and get a bit of exercise, get the blood going. Because I weighed myself this morning and I am one fat mother. <laughs> I'm six foot one inches tall and I'm 16 stone seven pounds. So I need to lose about three stone or so. Big time. This is quite important. But anyway, so uh, this right here behind me is the Burnworthing Forest, which, uh, which I remember from the last video I did. And I'm just walking up a hill called Birch Tor. Have a bit of a wander around. I've not been up there before, but I'm hoping if I can pan properly. Yeah, I think what I'm seeing over there, that's the Warren House Inn. Interestingly enough, there's a fire that's been burning in the hearth there since about, if I remember correctly, I may be wrong, about 1830, something like that. Now I did try and Google the actual date that it was, that it's been burning since, um, but I've got no mobile phone signal up here, so uh, so I wasn't able to do that. And I don't like to misinform you guys, so uh, when I get back home to upload this video, I'll put the actual date in the video, uh, in, in a link on the um, I think if I remember rightly, it was around about 1840, which is pretty amazing really, isn't it? And you can imagine hundreds of years ago, if you were walking across this moor, this bleak, barren, windswept wild landscape, you can wonder and hope that place must have been to just see off in the distance, where you could go and refresh yourself with a pint of beer and sit by the fire that's been roaring there for a almost 200 years. So there you go. I'll, um, I'll pick this video up again in a little minute or two when I'm up to the top of the hill. So, here we are up on Birch Tor. And Birch Tor, just like uh, I've mentioned in a former video, um, is a basalt intrusion. Um, so that's where the lava's come up through a softer rock in like a chimney uh, and then solidified and that softer rock's been worn away um, and what you're left with are these tours, these pillars of basalt that poke up through the rest of the landscape and uh, I just need to uh, make a quick uh, apology for one of my earlier videos where I said I was sitting on a lava field of course I wasn't, I was talking nonsense um, as a So that's what these, these tours are really all about, they're these igneous basalt intrusions. But, uh, you can see here behind me, we've got uh, Burnworthy Forest over there, which I've already mentioned, and uh, over there we've got Warren House Inn. Um, and uh, right here behind me actually, we've got, um, if you can see it, I'm not sure you can, but just around about there somewhere, can't see it don't worry about it because I'm gonna do a, a separate video on that place. A place called Grimm's Pound which is uh, a Bronze Age settlement of, uh, of tremendous importance, archaeological importance in this area um, and it goes right back to a time when this landscape was a lot less harsh, a lot more forgiving and a lot more fertile because once upon a time very important, very thriving agricultural community, um, but uh, it was a, quite a few thousand years ago. But here behind me again, uh, we've got, uh, you can see, there's uh, some remnants of field system down here, um, and also down in the valley bottoms here, we've got a, a lot of old mining activity, because uh, there were a, a lot of, sort of small adits and things uh, that used to go into the hillsides around here. So uh, copper, tin, lead, that sort of thing. And then, if we look uh, further to the southwest over there, um, we've got these 
beautiful green alluvial sort of uh, valley bottoms, much, much more fertile uh, than the really acidic ground up here on the moor. But uh, we've got a pretty good day for it today. Um, as it goes, you can actually see, um, I'm going to walk over here a moment, you can actually see um, right there behind me, I don't know if you can see anywhere, uh, over towards Exeter, the city where I live, uh, and how the landscape changes to be green. Um, rather than this sort of rusty, um, bronze-coloured earth that we get here. But I'm going to sit down, myself a tea, load up a pipe, and I'll be with you again in a sec. Hopefully, it's a little less windy for you here. certainly a lot less windy for me. Although it did take me a couple of minutes to get my pipe lit. But I'm smoking some Nashville County. As you'll all know, one of my favourite blends. Um, I'm mostly burly and Red Virginia uh, from Germany, from HU Tobaccos. And um, I've been very lucky, very, very lucky indeed recently because I've had a couple of tins gifted to me, um, both by Wolfgang and by my, my lurker friends, so, um, which is just awesome. Thank you both very much. Uh, I've actually got some, um, some Nashville County that I've got unopened and I'm gonna send ahead of my advance to Papua New Guinea. so I can enjoy it when I'm over there. And I'm having a cup of Assam tea. Oh, which is lovely. So I wanted to, uh, to just relate a story which, um, uh, or, or a, an occurrence the other day that made me think um, and it's something I've touched upon in the past, um, actually. And that is along the theme of listening to um, to older folks, or to folks of a, a more senior generation, shall we say. Now, it's very true to say that some older folks are full of shit. But a lot aren't. And as happened to me the other day, um, I was um, I was wandering around somebody's woodland where I was giving a talk for one of the local trusts, uh, the wildlife trusts. And I won't say um, the woman's name or where I was, but she was a woman in, in her 70s um, who had been a, an academic scientist during during her working life um, and she owned this piece of woodland really really beautiful piece of woodland um, I was supposed to be going there to give a talk on uh, on the best forms of management and, uh, for, for biodiversity for conservation for nature that sort of thing um, but also for economic return and you know what I, I just spent most of my time wandering around listening to this woman there was nothing I could teach her for goodness sake <laughs> But she was absolutely amazing. I fell in love with her immediately, seriously. Um, as I say, she was in her 70s, but she was so, um, so bright, so switched on, so energetic, um, very sprightly, very vivacious, you know. Um, and she insisted on telling me about the numerous lovers that she kept in the village. <laughs> And the, the men who she had do things for her in and around the woods. <laughs> so she was obviously living a very full life uh, in, well into her 70s. And I just thought that was amazing. Um, I thought um, you know, she, she became my new hero. I figured, well, do you know what, if I make it to my mid-70s, um, and I often wonder whether or not I will, 
Um, I want to be just like her. <laughs> just like her. It was fantastic. But it also made me think that, um, you know, we spent far too much of our lives grumbling about shit. And uh, not being satisfied and not making the most out of life. certainly guilty of that. I've got to the age where I'm in my early 40s. I'm starting to be a little bit more concerned about my health, for example. Um, whereas 10, 11 years ago, when I was 30 years old, um, and I was a 32-inch waist, and I was bouncing around the place with all of the energy and enthusiasm uh, that I currently don't have, <laughs> And of course you think that you're invincible. But you also do a lot of putting things off. And you think, no, I'll get round to that, I'll get round to that. And then you never do. And life just gets past you really quick. So you've got to get out. Enjoy yourself. Go and see what this world has got for you. And really enjoy every minute that you're here. Because you never know when your time is coming. That's a pretty nice view that I'm looking at right there. And okay, yeah, it's a, it's not a fairly typical forestry plantation, but it could be worse. So that's it for the minute anyway, folks. You guys take care. Enjoy yourselves. Be good to each other. And I'll see you again real soon.